Hey, what's up? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. Talking today to Imogen Poots. Coming to us live from London. Imogen, how you doing? I'm okay today, considering the circumstances we're all in. It's, it's all right. The sun is shining, whatever that means. So. <laughs> yeah, we're all trying to make sense of it right now. I'm in New Jersey. You're in London. There's sun outside, but life is kind of halted. And, you know, there's stuff coming out with TV shows and movies, but... This must be a really weird time for you with a couple new things coming out, right? It is strange, definitely. And, um, you know, you start to think about things in a different light, especially things you've worked on and uh, certain projects fit this uh, scenario more than others in terms of what we're all going through and experiencing. And um, it's it's eerily strange how on point something like Vivarium has turned out to be. Mm. Um, obviously, they didn't uh, intend for a pandemic to sweep um, alongside its release, but that's what's happened. So, um, yeah, it's, it's certainly strange. Well, why don't we talk about Vivarium? What was it like doing that movie? And now that people have all this time to hang out and be at home, what can they expect when they check it out? Yeah, well, hopefully, uh, hopefully people will feel catharsis and maybe through Vivarium, they'll be able to um, feel less alone with the isolation. And um, there's certainly a lot of um, familiar scenes within the film that I think we're all experiencing now. Um, and I hope that they find a catharsis. I hope that um, it isn't too heavy. Um, I do think there's some dark dark, dark humour in the film, but um, I've certainly found I've been gravitating towards films of a nature, of a genre nature and, and stuff recently. Um, but making the film was actually really wonderful and we shot it in Ireland and Belgium. Um, and I got to work with the wonderful Jesse Eisenberg, which was really cool. And despite the intensity of the film, we actually had a lot of fun making it. So it was pretty really pleasant. Awesome. You've yeah. worked with a lot of great people in the past. What was it about Jesse that you really took to and what are some things you picked up along the way from him? Yeah, well, gosh, Jesse's got an amazing career, I think. He's, um, he's really unique. And uh, to me, he's sort of like a 30s comedian, you know. He's um, like from the 1930s, not a comedian in the 30s. He, even though he is that. Um, he is an absolutely wonderful man. And uh, we've managed to work together three times, which is really cool. Um, and I've just loved him in many films. I've loved him in The End of the Tour and The Double. And then, obviously, he's done bigger stuff too but I just think he's an extraordinary talent and a great person to hang out with and we always laugh a lot like stupid things <laughs> stupid stupid humor but really fun that's really awesome you mentioned a couple minutes ago just about picking a certain type of genre and kind of what appeals to you now how did that change over time over the last couple of years yeah it's interesting it's interesting um, I always think it's a strange um, path you forge as an actor because you often get asked about having a plan and I don't ever really understand how you can have that in life anyway. Let there's, alone there's no way. Yeah, with a career, possible. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's like a Mike Tyson quote about being punched in the mouth. Mm. Have a plan until we get punched in the mouth and I guess that's what we're all going through. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in terms of genre, my taste has obviously changed and adapted and gone back and gone forward over the years and genre is something that um, is ever interesting. It's always um, a reflection of what we're all experiencing, whether you choose for that to happen or not. Um, and I think it offers up great platform for female performance often too. Um, but I'm a big genre fan. I love psychological horror. Like The, the Others is still the most terrifying film mm. for me personally. Um, and uh, I'm drawn to sort of stories like that but not necessarily just like gratuitous violence right <laughs> <laughs> not all the time i'm just gonna yeah so yeah it has these parts that have some depth and also just to have some range to kind of explore some different places that you may not be able to go to with some other types of genres i guess right yeah absolutely i think so and i think even the term genre has sort of expanded and extended mm -hmm. i think um it's a very elastic uh platform um to try out ideas and uh people are very very responsive to it there's a real inbuilt fan base who want you to succeed with it 
And I think you really meet some extraordinary minds through working on genre film too. You, you meet some real characters and, uh, and I love it when people can dip in and out of it. And um, it's not, I don't think it's as um, confined perhaps mm -hmm. as, it, as it used to be, the idea of genre. Yeah, even the idea of platforms, right? That's pretty fluid these days. I mean, you're somebody that's done like a ton of films in your career, but you're going to be doing a TV show on HBO and you can kind of bounce back and forth now. So why don't you tell people what's coming up with, uh, with the new show? Yes, yes. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of an HBO miniseries called I Know This Much Is True. And it stars the brilliant Mark Ruffalo alongside these extraordinary actresses like Juliette Lewis and Catherine Hahn and Melissa Leo and all these brilliant people. Um, and Derek Sion France helmed it, who was the mind and heart behind Blue Valentine. Um, so he's got a gorgeous sensibility with the camera and with characters. And uh, it was so cool. It was like a dream. It was a dream come true being part of that.